From the Opepco Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson, and he's Barry Trammell, and we're brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. Go online right now and order your pizza at papajohns.com. Time for our five in five, five topics, about a minute each for five minutes. Let's get right to it, Barry, with this question. Everybody's talking about Richard Sherman, but who's the bigger story? Is it the Seattle defensive back or Denver quarterback Peyton Manning? Well, Peyton Manning is an American icon. He know everybody in America knows Peyton Manning. They like Peyton Manning. Uh, the uh, the commercials, the uh, the comeback, the the demeanor. Everybody loves Peyton Manning. He is clearly the shining star of Super Bowl 48. But the bigger story is Richard Sherman. Darnell and I going through Thunder security at the arena the other night. Uh, the uh, the lady checking our bags makes a reference to Richard Sherman. Darnell says. <laughs> Had you ever heard of Richard Sherman before uh, last weekend? No, never heard of the guy, but I know who he is now. Everybody wants to find out more about this wild man who, uh, who uh, scared, uh, scared to death Aaron Andrews. So I think Richard, <laughs> Sher I think Richard Sherman has become the biggest story of, uh, of Super Bowl 48. At Super Bowl Media Day on Tuesday, uh, you can count. There'll be, uh, there'll be mobs of media around Peyton Manning. There'll be mobs of media around Richard Sherman. I predict more people around Richard Sherman. Yeah, I think he is the bigger story. And you know what's funny? The other day in the office, I made the comment, I'm over this Richard Sherman story. I'm, I'm so tired of it. And one of my coworkers here in the office said, yeah, I was over it before it started. And then we spent the next five or 10 minutes debating about Richard Sherman. So I'm not sure we're really over it. It's definitely what people are talking about. Yeah, people may be pulling for Peyton Manning, but it's hard not to continue to have conversations about Richard Sherman and the fallout from that story. All right, Barry, what about this one? Another NFL Super Bowl related question. Oklahoma City's own Wes Welker. Dirty? Really? No, not dirty at all. In fact, uh, just driving to the office today, I heard uh, uh, Mike Pierre, former head of NFL officiating. He was uh, on a radio show uh, talking about the Wes Welker play and said it was not against the rules. It was not dirty. In fact, uh, Wes could have done a lot more. He said Wes Welker could have hit uh, to believe in the head and it wouldn't have been illegal. So uh, he said, no, uh, it's not at all. He thinks uh, he, he was very stunned that Bill Belichick made a uh, issue of this. Sounds like Bill Belichick is just letting off some steam about some personal issues with Wes Welker. You know, I thought it was just that too, but then I, I read something today uh, on Thursday about a, a, a player from Seattle talking about the play again and saying how it was uh, intentional and trying to take him out. Uh, you know, maybe this is just not going to go away. Maybe this is just going to be a storyline. But to think that Wes Welker, who's had two concussions this season and who was as devastated by that ACL tear a couple years ago that knocked him out of the playoffs, to think he would try to injure another player, I'm just not buying it. I mean, was it a pick play? Sure. Uh, but lots of teams are in pick plays, including the Patriots, for crying out loud. And I just, I don't buy that he was trying to take somebody out. It's just, it's not who he is. It's not what he's done before. And I don't think it's what he was trying to do against Aqib Tlaib. All right, Barry, what about this question? The person most impacted by Kendall Thompson transferring from OU is? You mean other than Kendall Thompson? Of course. Then I will say Bell. <laughs> Blake Bell. Think about it. I mean, who's, uh, who's going to be OU's backup quarterback next season? Maybe on paper it'll be Cody Thomas. Maybe Blake Bell will, uh, will uh, move to tight end. I don't think Blake Bell's going to transfer, but he could also. But uh, let me promise you, if Blake Bell stays and, uh, and our man uh, um, Trevor, Knight. Trevor Knight, can't even think of the uh, quarterback star, but if Trevor Knight, uh, if he goes down, uh, he's only finished three of the five games he started. If he goes down early in the season, I don't think the Sooners are going to look to, uh, to one of those young guys as the long-term uh, answer at quarterback. I think they'd go back to Blake Bell. I think, uh, I think uh, Kendall Thompson's leaving makes it more likely that Blake Bell quarterbacks in the future at Oklahoma. Blake Bell now playing the part of Paul Thompson. Paul Thompson, you remember, moved to wide receiver, and then Rhett Bomar gets the boot, and suddenly Paul Thompson's a quarterback again, leads, leads Oklahoma to a Big 12 championship. I, I don't know if Blake Bell is ultimately going to see a, a ton of time starting. I mean, maybe Trevor Knight stays healthy the whole year, but, you know, I got to think that Oklahoma's going to leave him there, going to leave him at quarterback. You, I would think you need to at least have him feeling like he's ready to play if needed, but I think this opens the door to him staying 
and staying at quarterback. I think he is impacted, but I'll tell you who else is impacted are those younger guys. To get going, Cody Thomas, you know, get the offense learned, prove themselves. I think they are in the crosshairs as well. All right, our fun question of the week, Barry. Surge and carry, Serge Ibaka, Kerry Hilton on the outs. Cause for concern? Well, when you sent me this question, I, <coughs> my first response was, Serge, Rabaka, and Kerry Underwood are together? And why didn't somebody tell me? Uh, uh, Kerry Underwood's taken, by yeah, the way. Uh, Although, that'd be, a good, that'd be a good fist fight. Serge and her hockey-playing husband. I wouldn't mess with a hockey player. They're, they're <laughs> kooks. Anyway, uh, it's not, not a concern for me. I didn't know they were on the ends, much less that they're now on the outs. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole list of uh, people who get Serge straightened out if he's down in the dumps over a breakout with, uh, is she a singer, I guess? Okay, if he, right. Uh, get a breakup with some singer. Let me tell you what, Kendrick Perkins will straighten him out quick. Dirk Fisher can counsel him. Russell West, Westbrook can stare him down. He's got all kinds of, uh, of uh, remedies for his, uh, for his uh, problems. So, uh, sorry to hear about it, Serge, but I have to tell you, uh, really didn't know too much about it to start with, so uh, keep rebounding, keep sinking, sinking jumpers, keep uh, blocking shots, everything's going to be okay. Seems like he's been okay in the aftermath, but I, I have to say, this cuts down some of our star power, you know, you lose Kerry Hilson and... I, I mean, who's our next biggest star to be well, part of this Harden, whole thing? Harden always met, he was always mentioned with somebody, too. Yeah, yeah she was a rapper, I believe. Well, and then uh, Durant, uh, <coughs> apparently with his WNBA fiance. Yeah, well. It's an epidemic. Doesn't anybody stay together anymore? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> There's probably about 12 people watching us that know that lyric. All right, here we go. Lastly, let's talk about this. Talking about the Thunder and Kevin Durant. When should the MVP sta chance start? Barry, I feel like Thunder fans need a little help here to uh, get the MVP going. Well, you asked me that question. Darnell seems eat up with the question. He's <laughs> always wanting the fans to chant, uh, you know, when, when Durant goes to the uh, foul line at games. I find it sort of charming that the Oklahoma City doesn't do that. Uh, I find it a little off-putting. You know, Kobe Bryant still, you know, Laker fans chant that thing in the last couple of years when he's clearly not the most valuable player. I find it uh, sort of charming that the uh, Thunder fans are saying, you know what, the MVP is going to sort itself out. LeBron's been the MVP. Looks like our man Durant's going to be the MVP now. Uh, but uh, don't need, uh, we don't need the peanut gallery to, uh, to endorse uh, Kevin Durant. So it doesn't bother me. Uh, but uh, just to keep uh, our man Darnell in a good mood, maybe we need to start. Well, maybe the fans have started to realize what the rest of us have realized. Looks like Kevin Durant may have this thing sewed up. There's no reason to chant. It's already taken care of. The way this guy's playing, it looks like he's in the driver's seat for this thing. But I'll tell you what, just for just to, to sort of have a, a barometer, I think last two minutes of the game, you know, Durant at the free throw line, that seems like a good time of the game to, to do some of that. I mean, doesn't bother me. I don't. In the first quarter, yeah, I that the whole thing with the Lakers fans annoys me. So don't do it then. But Giving him a little love, that's all right. I mean, for crying out loud, the guy's playing fantastic. Do a little MVP. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.